Afterwards, we worked out that what he must have meant was that I talked about evolution. He thought I was saying that his flock were animals, which of course, in a sense, I was, because all humans are animals. Habit's approach is to say, let's teach evolution as just another theory alongside the Bible's creation story, also called intelligent design, which claims God helped evolution along. It sounds so reasonable, doesn't it? But of course it's nothing of the sort. These are not equal theories. Evolution by natural selection is supported by mountains of evidence, while creation contradicts the evidence and is only backed by some ancient scribblings. With Haggard and his followers on their doorstep, the rational atheist minority here feel so browbeaten that they've organized themselves into what they call a free thinkers group, which meets furtively, perhaps to fantasize about moving to Canada. How does in America feel pretty beleaguered at the moment? I've had my fair share of vitriolic uh, letters and uh, messages from parents saying that uh, I'm Satan's incarnate for teaching evolution. And there are ministries here in Colorado Springs that indoctrinate students uh, in summer programs to challenge biologists, biology teachers in the, in the classroom. And I've organized campaigns. Oh, there are organized campaigns, absolutely. I do not tolerate it because I'm... They have this mindset that they are right. If a person comes out in this country as an atheist, they're likely to suffer career damage. They might lose a job. They might not get a job. They might lose an opportunity for an apartment. We can have the North Americans do very late on this, coming to a realization, as we did during the McCarthy era, and even during the very similar to the McCarthy era. We do begin now to see the dangers uh, of this extremism. Christian fascism. Yes. Yeah. And whatever mantle you want to give it, which I've heard lately is domination theology, dominion in Christianity. How many Christians do you have? I had a hard time. Fundamentalist American Christianity is attacking science. But what is it offering instead? A mirror image of Islamic extremism. An American Taliban. We live in a time of lethal polarization, when the great religions are pushing their conflict to a point where it is difficult to see how they can ever be reconciled. In New York, Madrid, and London, we've witnessed the religious insanities of the Middle East penetrate the heart of the secular West. To understand the likes of Osama bin Laden, you have to realize that the religious terrorism they inspire is the logical outcome of deeply held faith. Even so-called moderate believers are part of the same religious fabric. They encourage unreason as a positive virtue. What's really scary is that religious warriors think of what they are doing as the ultimate good. Those of us brought up in Christianity can soon get the message. Onward, Christian soldiers, fight the good fight. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. But as far as I'm concerned, the war between good and evil is really just the war between two evils. This is the Holy Land, where the terrible certainties of faith began and still rage. I've come here because it's a microcosm of the religious conflicts which threaten rational values and civilization. The dreadful combination of politics and extreme faith has caused the death of almost 4,000 people here in shootings, suicide bombings, and reprisals in the last five years. Despite the troubles, tourists still flock to Jerusalem, to places that their particular brand of religion taught them to revere as a child. The Via Dolorosa, where Jesus was allegedly whipped and beaten during the last hours of his life. Or the Muslim Dome of the Rock. Or the Western Wall, Judaism's and the world's most holy ruin. On the surface, it looks like a place of harmless myth. 
was classified in the form of this. Here, what we are facing is the strong anointment, where the body of Jesus was taken down from the cross. So this is the slab where Christ's body was anointed with oil. How do we know that? Is there any evidence that it was here? You see, this is by telling from person to person. It's, tra it's tradition. Tradition yes. from generation to the next. Yes. We can see the hole where the cross was stood. Where they're putting the cross inside the hole, and this is the place where the place of the crucifixion and where Jesus died on the cross. You, you don't really believe that, do you? Uh, this is the Christians, I explained to you that they believe this is the place where the crucifixion took place. And if we come closer to you, to my side, please. Thank you. Uh, down of the tomb is a Greek priest. The tomb regarding the tomb of Jesus. This is left from the big part of the stone which closed the tomb. What we call it the rolling of angels. Watch your head, please. Thank you very much. This is where you stay and rose from. So we call it sepulcher, means empty tomb. God bless you. You can touch in the tomb. You can make your prayer. Please, uh, I get four days off. If you come tomorrow, I'll give you another day. Forget This holy city has to be one of the least enlightened places in the world. And it is also a place of barely suppressed religious hatreds. One of the first things you notice is the edgy watchfulness. The different ethnic and religious communities live cheek by jowl. But there are security checkpoints throughout the old city, and one section, above all, is under heavy guard. For the Muslims, the compound enclosing the Dome of the Rock and El Aqsa Mosque is, after Mecca and Medina, the third holiest site in Islam. It was from here, they believe, that the Prophet Muhammad flew up to heaven. Fuck your fucking head right up, right now! Here it is! Right, well I hope those two videos by Richard, whatever his name is, right, show you how it showed me how ridiculous religion is when it's used as blind faith and conditioning to put people in a position where they are listening to what's being said to them by someone that was off their face however many thousands of years ago and now that applies to them today. It doesn't work. Women are not going to be going back in time. So, you know, Islam, get over it. And Christians, Jesus was a magic mushroom. So scientists get into understanding the whole scientific value of the magic mushroom because that science, that is a fact and Jesus was a magic mushroom. Blind faith. Why have you got blind faith? Because as a child you were conditioned to have blind faith. Or maybe you had no conditioning as a child and you want it now as an adult. So where do you go? To the church, to the religions, the religions of blind faith that are supposedly killing science. Well, why doesn't science wake up and explain the blind faith to the people? Explain it in scientific terms so that they can understand what it's all about, really. <laughs>